this is the latest generation BMW 2 Series Coupe. Now I'm remembering BMW's model naming regime where even numbers are two doors except when they have Grand Coupe on the end and then they become four doors with a coupe look or four door cars are odd numbers. So anyway, who cares, not important. Two Series Coupe, latest generation. The gills are not as big as on some of its brethren. Looks much better. And I've got to tell you, quite honestly, this in my book and my humble opinion is one of the nicest looking BMs I've driven in a long, long time. Really is. It's got an M body kit on it, so you can see it's low at the front. Probably too low for South African roads, speed bumps, potholes and all that nonsense. But that's what it is, and it certainly endows the car with lovely characteristics, handling, etc., etc. In typical BMW fashion, of course, you've got these very narrow headlights now, beautiful LEDs. It's got all of that kind of kit you'd expect from an upmarket car. And this is an upmarket car in most respects. You can see really mean looking 18 inch mags over here. Low, super low profile. I mean, they are really, but yet again, I must say, considering the lowness of the profile, considering everything else, this car was smoother and more comfortable again than a lot of its brethren that I've experienced in the recent past. As I mentioned, M body kit. No, it's not an M, just the M kit, M performance. Two door coupe I mentioned. We all know they're the least practical possible configuration available. But it's a case of if it suits you, who cares? I don't a lot of the time. Unlock the door, which has unlocking at the touch of the button, as you see. But you've got to press the key to lock. Strange spec, but it's how it works. And notice, of course, the frameless doors being a two-door coupe. Really nice, really neat, and I like that feature. Full leather trim, you can see with the blue stitching. It's got all those things, but again, like the last BMW I drove, I do not understand manual seats, both driver and passenger. I really think, feel a bit shortchanged. Surely, surely BMW, you could give us electric seats at least for the driver. But that's the spec it comes in. You can order it, you can spec it, you know how it works. As it goes, come along, obviously you've got the very, very raked roof line, massive C pillar coming across over here. Round two, interesting tail lights over here that cut into the boot lid, of course, but just unusual, different. But anyway, not important. Car's got a spoiler, lip spoiler on the boot. And I've got to say, boot size for a car that, as far as I'm concerned, if you're traveling, you travel with only two up is certainly more than big enough. And Ledford's left one of his nets over here, but of course, run flats, no spare wheel under there. You've got mobility kits and whatever, but you know my feeling on run flats, I'm not even going to comment. What you do have that's nice is, of course, you've got gas struts holding the boot lid up, so you're not gonna get decapitated by a boot lid dropping on you. Look at that. It does help occasionally. And of course, you've got the diffuser effect down below at the bottom over there just to give you the serious effect and ma massive single tailpipe only on the left hand side on this car now what's important is that the two series comes out in three models in south africa at the moment and again i find this interesting and possibly where maybe i don't know if i agree with what bmw have done this is the 220 diesel yes it's that same engine that we tested the other day in the X3. 140 kilowatts, 400 newton meters of torque. 400! It's been around for so long, but what a good, great, great engine. And of course, in this body, wow. Because it's a small car, isn't it? Much lighter. But you get a 220 petrol, which interestingly puts out 135 kilowatts, or you get the 440, sorry, the 240, which gives you all-wheel drive, and the three liter six cylinder with 285 kilowatts. Double this. Crazy. BMW have such a great 30 engine available. 
which is still the two litre in petrol with turbos at 190 kilowatts and to me if I was buying I would want one of those but they don't market it in South Africa who knows anyway let's drive it let's check it out inside and you'll see what I'm talking about being a two-door coupe one of the inconveniences is getting people in and out of the back seat let's see how this one works there's a handle in the backrest you flip it slide the seat forward like that now let's see how gainly or ungainly I'm going to do this all right climb climb sit pull the seat back and I don't even know if you can see me so let me just actually flip that out the way then your camera will pick me up a bit better you can see there's just enough legroom for me over here it's pretty damn tight but anyway and as for headroom my hat is scraping on the roof it literally is if I take the hat off which I wouldn't do very often I'll just make it wow tight fit but anyway okay they put a sort of cup holder effect in the center here so it is definitely only for two people in the back you do have air con vents with a zone here so you can control your air con and two usbs below nice bmw good one there but what you don't have in the back is any ability to open the back windows they don't open at all claustrophobia boys that's for sure if it was me in here have to tell you I would be a little bit unhappy being stuck in the back of this car added to the fact as I showed you a minute ago wow between the seat here the headrest everything else for littlies maybe or if you're single yeah sure this is not a family car but come on it doesn't pretend to be so don't expect it On the road, this car really, to me, is an absolute pleasure. I must say, I've enjoyed driving it. It's much smoother than I expected. I mentioned just now, the suspension is actually pretty supple. Even with those run flat tires and those incredibly low profiles, it's smoother than similar cars and a lot of others I've driven lately. But of course, 140 kilowatts is not shy. 400 Newton meters is certainly not shy. It's got the get up and go that you want from a sporty coupe. Can I call it that? You want a sports coupe, you buy the 240i version, as I mentioned earlier. But the handling is superb. I've taken it through the bends through to Hardy Bearspur twice, in fact, on this test, and it certainly handled those beautifully. It just is, this is really, in my book, what BMWs are originally about and were always about the sheer driving pleasure as they call it and the handling that you'd expect from a beamer it's got it all in absolute bucket fools it feels snug the cockpit you really feel like you're in control you feel like everything remembering i haven't mentioned the fact this is rear wheel drive very interestingly one of the few smaller cars on the market today that is rear wheel drive and if you lead foot and I let him get hold of this one which you'll see evidence of just now you'll notice that you can certainly certainly hustle this along and use the performance to a massive extent if that's what you want turning circles not bad I mean I can't complain about my favorite spot where I turn on my little test drives with me videoing and of course you've got cameras you've got overhead you've got reverse you've got all the cameras you'd want etc etc but it just is such a pleasure on the road it really is and it goes so well that's all i can say so for driver and one passenger this is certainly certainly a great great option as always let's look at the figures and yes we're showing 7.7 .7 liters per hundred for this test for the full period lead foot what can i say on the first day of the test i took it for an economy cruise two hearties and I got there showing 4.9 yes I drove it for a bit I was in the fives I gave it to Leadfoot it came back in the eights I've got it back to 7.7 .7. 
This is a car of two worlds and of two habits and of two minds. And it's going to always depend how you drive it. You drive it sedately, which I know it's not designed for, you'll get fives and under six. You drive it like lead foot, you're going to get eights and nines. That's the way life is, and that's what you can expect. Now, I've got to show you something that I certainly would not spec on my car. On both front doors, you've got its, I know it's the M logo. I know that. But, ah, uh, uh, sorry, I would not put this on my car. No way whatsoever. But it's a choice you can make, and I'm pretty sure this was a spec item that somebody ticked a box. <laughs> Good luck to them. <laughs> You've obviously got everything on the steering wheel you want. I'm not going to run through it all. You know what it's about. That's all I'm going to say. You've got paddles. Yes, you've got proper paddles for the 8-speed automatic gearbox. It's the standard BMW automatic gearbox. You know how it goes. It's smooth. It's comfortable. It's easy. It's everything else. And, of course, you've got the massive screen over there, which is still operated. Come down to the center console over here. From the center console, you've still got the twisting knob and of course the shortcut buttons around it over there so for example I'll press home and there you go to the home screen and I can press for example car let's just have a look and I'll press driving information and journey data and there you can see what's been happening over the last few journeys and I can guarantee you that that period over there was where Aunt Leadfoot had his handle on the car as well just to give you an idea but that's how it works, and that's the way it is. And you can see we've done 500 Ks on this test. Certainly a good amount of distance. I'm not going to talk too much on all of that, but keep on the screen for a moment, of course. And remember, I have kept it in comfort all the way. But you do have Eco Pro if you want, and you do, of course, have Sport if you want, which immediately cuts out the stop-start feature on the car. As you heard there, it immediately restarted. So it does have. So you've got all your options on that. And as you know, with BMW, it means that it does actually change the mapping. It changes the handling. It changes everything on the car when you change multi-modes on the transmission. All of those are there. The push-pull gear lever, as I call it, it works brilliantly. I've got no complaints whatsoever. You've got this nice big area over here for your cell phone. Could have inductive charging there. I don't think this one does. And you've got one USB over there. But of course, if you want to hide, you close that up. Under here, you've got a nice big armrest and compartment and another USB. So well done there, BMW. At least you've got two USBs in front, two at the back. And this car, you'll notice, has got a nice big, not quite a panoramic roof, but a big sunroof fitted as well. Obviously, I'm not going to go through it. It's got the full spec of BMW instrumentation, the full spec of BMW luxury, and the full spec of BMW safety. So you get your six airbags. You get all of those features you would expect from this car. And you would expect it at the price. Because this car, in standard spec, is 820,000 Rand. 819, I'm going to call it. Okay. You want to go to the... 220 petrol as I said you lose a little bit of power but petrol you will go start at 771 so there's basically a, 20, a 50 thousand rand price difference between the two and you go up to about 1.1 million approximately for the 240i X drive I still want a 230i that's where I think I would like to be and I personally this is personal lifestyle stage of life etc a two series coupe would suit my life right now so i'd be very happy with one bmw you want to bring a 230i in and give it to me on a six or 12 month test period i'll take it with pleasure you obviously have competition from mercedes from all the other brands as well that come in as well the c-class coupe would be the first and foremost of course in your competitors in this category especially when the new one arrives i think that's going to be quite something we'll have to see what it's like but a BMW is a BMW, a BM driver is a BM driver, and very seldom do they swap between the two. You either love it or you hate it. As simple as that. And this particular model, the two-door coupe, either suits you or it doesn't. Ah, that's up to you. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor. I'll see you next time.